Hi, this is Shannon reporting. Thanks for tuning in today to Big Wave Small Talk. It's a podcast about big waves and how to survive them. Today's episode is supported by Iceris Wetsuits. Surf stronger and longer with Iceris Compression Wetsuits. Today, I'm honored to have Kiala Kennelly joining me from the island of Kauai. She has been a pioneer for women's big wave surfing. I've never set limitations for myself based on the opinion of others, you know, and I think that's uh, been the, the secret to my success. You also mentioned that you wanted to thank the people that said you couldn't do it because that actually motivated you more. Oh my God, my haters are my best motivators every time. She is pushing the sport of women surfing and opening opportunities for other women that would like to compete on the Hawaiian Islands. Hi. Hi, everybody. Tell us where you're joining us from. Uh, I'm just here in my bedroom. Uh, here, let me show you guys. This is all my, can you see? It's all my GG stuff. I was going to work on a mix today. It's kind of keeping me sane. Music's always been my therapy. Yeah, that's awesome. Maybe people that don't know, you actually are working as a DJ. I mean, pretty much all over the place. I got laid off, I got laid off three weeks ago. <laughs> like everybody else. Have you noticed a lot of musicians are creating content from home and letting people stream live? Like maybe we could do a little show with DJ KK from your bedroom. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm putting together a banger of a mix right now. I made a mix weeks ago, but it was, it was super dope processing everything that's happening right now and I think a lot of us are mourning the loss of things I I lost my job a ton of money in the stock market I had all these like amazing opportunities coming up like the 2020 Olympics which got canceled. uh and then we all lost our freedom so we're mourning a lot of um of loss and mourning just our way of life has completely changed right now. So, uh, so yeah, I made I made a mix two weeks ago, but it's super emo. But I'll, I'm gonna post. I can't face. <laughs> but I I'm gonna try and play something much more upbeat, and uh, maybe I'll go live on that one. Yeah. How does music help you um, through this situation? Like, what about being in that flow gets you um, just to have a po more positive mindset? Uh, I mean, music. Music can, can evoke so many different emotions, right? So I can either dive into deep pain or, you know, you can play something that, like, literally makes you feel high and super happy. So, um, yeah, it's just up to you. <laughs> awesome. Is there anywhere people can listen to your music? Um, I know I've seen you live so many times. It's been awesome. But right now, given the, you know, clubs and bars are shut down, Anywhere they can go to listen to some of your tracks or what you're yeah, doing? I have a SoundCloud. I put a lot of mixes. Uh, I, I feel free to download, free to share, because I feel like music is a gift and it should be given away. So, um, yeah, anybody can go on my SoundCloud and, and have a listen. Awesome. Well, you, so you're at home. Is that in Waikiki or are you back in Kauai? No, I actually moved uh, – I actually moved out to um, the windward side recently, so I'm over in Kaneohe now. Okay. Yeah. It's nice. Cool. It's beautiful. <laughs> uh, well, today is also, we're celebrating uh, World Bipolar Day, and I wanted to get your insight on why this is important to reduce stigma and also just how someone that might be listening to the show dealing with depression could take a note from you on what you do to stay upbeat and um and yeah you wanted to maybe maybe talk a little bit about what that day means to you uh well first of all i think i read an article just recently that there's actually going to be a lot of mental health issues coming from this situation right now there's nothing anybody's experienced in our lifetime so there's going to be a lot of depression anxiety and um mental health issues coming out of this but uh bipolar World Bipolar Day is especially close to my heart because I got diagnosed with bipolar type 2 with rapid cycling uh, about a year and a half. And just uh, being able to be properly diagnosed and get on proper medication has helped me tremendously. Uh, I didn't really think I was going to speak openly about uh, my bipolar, my mental health issues, but um, 
last year right around this time is uh, when Sonny tried to commit suicide. And I had actually been speaking to him. Uh, we've been private messaging each other and I had been uh, kind of opening up to him. And because I could see he a lot of things about depression and his struggles with depression on his Instagram. So I reached out and told him about my experience and just that I had been misdiagnosed with depression by so many therapists. And, and um, when I finally got a proper diagnosis and got on the right medication, it helped me. And so I'm trying to encourage him to take that step. And unfortunately, he hung himself a week later, you know. And then Andy Irons as well is... He was like my childhood best friend and like a brother to me. And I know it's been speculated that he had undiagnosed bipolar. And I, I definitely think so. And I, I was a huge factor um, in his death as well. So I think it's really important for him to just end the stigma about it and start talking about it mm -hmm. so we can help people that need help. Yeah, especially in the Big Wave Surf community, it's an ongoing discussion. I think it's really helpful for everyone to make it less of a stigma so they can get resources and talk to each other about it. Um, and I just applaud you for, for doing that and opening up the discussion so you don't have to feel um, guilty or something like as if you're doing or, something wrong, like, you know. A of, there's a lot of shit associated with it, but I find... You know, especially if you're a public figure, if you're a, you know, an actor and a professional athlete, put that face to something that is stigma or um, discriminated about. I just remember being a closeted homosexual and then somebody as brave as Ellen did, like, you know, step out and put a and she, like, her career greatly before back up again, you know, it just takes really brave people to, um, you know, just uh, step out of the shadows and make people aware and kind of normalize it. For sure. Um, well, so the last time I saw you, you were actually celebrating a dinner for women surfing over the course of the past few weeks. There's been a lot of development in the Honolulu City Council in regards to equity for women's surf contests. Um, have you heard any updates or where where are we right now today on the possibility of women being invited back to something like a Triple Crown? God, who knows? I mean, they canceled like the rest of the, w the WSL World Tour. I think everything is just at a standstill right now. But the work we were doing before um, the, the entire world was up with COVID-19 was... Uh, you know, to get some, some equality opportunity and in, in, in surfing back on the North Shore, we were really elated to have uh, WSL announce equal pay, you know, last year. Uh, but it's kind of, if, you, if there's no actual opportunity to make the equal pay, it's kind of an empty gesture, you know. And um, I just, uh, it's near and dear to my heart because I... I got my start in pro surfing by flying over to Oahu in the Hawaiian Triple Crown. You know, that really helped jumpstart my career. I know Chris Samore, first event, pro event she ever did with Oliva. I watched her 12 years old, you know. So it's just, it's a shame that little girls in, in Hawaii, if they have big dreams of making the world tour and becoming world champion, there's just really no opportunities. There. You know, it's like... You're born in Hawaii and you're a little boy. We're going to give you all these opportunities. I think they have like five or six qualifying events for the boys. And there's absolutely none for girls. So we asking our little girls. We're shipping them off to foreign countries. Uh, you know, we're asking them to recalibrate their dreams just because they were born a female. Because they got to recalibrate their dreams, dreams for the opportunities that they have here, which is none. So unless they're independently wealthy... Their, their dream of becoming a pro surfer is pretty shattered. Yeah, and it seems like the pioneers of women surfing have been fighting for this for so long. Um, I thought it was really moving that there were a few 15-year-old girls that came to talk to the committee and stood up there in front of all of these people um, and said, you know, your whole life as a Grom, if you're a guy on the North Shore, you're, 
you know, wanting to surf pipe. And as a girl, you're watching everyone else surf pipe. And I thought that was really moving because those are the girls that are really going to benefit from any change. And I think the time is now. Um, you're actually on those the cover. Are, those are, I don't know if you saw this already. Oh, but it came uh, to my house and I still have it by in my room just to motivate me. Um, the title, the headline news for the North Shore, Equality for Female Surfers, Female Surfers on the North Shore. It's, you know, this is the epicenter. This is the, like you said, this is well, where... It's it's mind blowing to me because this is this is the birthplace. Why is the birthplace of surfing? The North Shore is the Miracle Mile. It's the mecca of surfing, and yet we don't have a single event for women on the North Shore. I mean, it's kind of shameful. Yeah. So 2003, you actually took the title. What was it like back then? Was there prize money? Uh, what was the the what was it like to surf in the 2003 Triple Crown? Uh, so 2003 Triple Crown, we had an event at Haliva, we had an event at Sunset, and uh, finished uh, in Maui at Honolulu Bay. Amazing, amazing Triple Crown. And, um, you know, it was really prestigious to win the Hawaii Triple Crown. Uh, and now, like, when I was doing research, you know, to put together a speech for, to speak in front of the county council and for equality and opportunity, you know, I went online to kind of research, like, how how many years we had the Women's Triple Crown before it just ended. I'm trying to look trying to look up former Triple Crown champions for the women. I couldn't even find it anywhere on the internet. Like, it never happened. The history's been erased. Um, as far back as I women had a Triple Crown, all the way back to 1990. Uh, and that continued until the year 2010. So it's been an entire decade of the women not having um, a, a triple crown store. Yeah, I think just the awareness is important. I've noticed a lot of people just weren't even aware of the, the situation. And I think just getting the story out is gonna be important and hopefully move the needle. Um, let's talk about Chopu for a minute. Every time I share this photo of you from the Big Wave Awards with your Epic Tube Award, it goes viral and people are just like, you know, I even had someone comment today, I want that printed and posted on my wall. And how, um, how did that wave change your life? And I still recall the, the, um, your speech going up on stage, and it was so moving. Can you recall that moment when you found out you won? Um, first of all, I, I couldn't believe I was winning. Not because I didn't think I, the Wave deserved to win that year, but just the fact that they were allowing a women to be all the men, all the best men in the world, that they were actually going to allow that moment to happen uh, was really shocking in a good way. Um, yeah, it, it was something I didn't even think was possible to win something like that, to be nominated for something like that. Something like that. Um, and it just goes to show, you know, you, you just got to dream big because dreams are free, you know. It costs nothing to dream. You also mentioned that you wanted to thank the people that said you couldn't do it because that actually motivated you more. Oh, my God. My haters are my best motivators every time. Every it's time. Awesome. I, I've never set limitations for myself based on the opinions of others, you know, and I think that's uh been the, the secret to my success you know if i would have listened to every tom dick and harry that told me like i couldn't surf waves or i couldn't scope so i couldn't paddle jaws or barrel you know i wouldn't have accomplished even half of the things i have in my life so you just can never you can never set limitations on yourself based on the opinions of others um and it just you know it made me it, so angry that people were telling me I couldn't do these things and it was all based on my you know which was it's so one dimensional because you know people look at me and they see me like okay I'm a female I'm not as physically strong as a man but like they can't see like they're just seeing the exterior they're not seeing like inside of me they're not seeing my my inner strength they're not seeing my resilience my my 
my heart, my grit. Like, there's so much that they can't see, and that so, you know, people are just completely. And so, until somebody's like your body staring out of your eyes, and like, you know, they don't know what you what you're capable of. That's awesome. Uh, I love that. I also, I love that Kate Bosworth was a big supporter uh, during this recent movement. You know, talk a little bit about Blue Crush and, you know, a lot of surfer girls, I think that was, that's one of their favorite movies or at least a, a big reason why they surf. What was it like to be on set there with Kate Bosworth and the film crew? Kate Bosworth is, I love that girl. She's, she's so dope. Michelle, well, we, I, it, it was really fun working with and getting to know them on a personal um Kate really just grabbed that role by the balls uh and you know here's somebody that had like never surfed before and obviously she wasn't out there pulling in and getting barreled at pipe can't learn to surf that good that quickly but you know she learned how to paddle and you know like all those cutaway thoughts of her paddling around at pipeline like she was really out there at Big pipeline where at any moment a big set could come, you know, smash her or kill her. Like I don't, I don't even think they realized like the danger they were in. Like I remember there was this sound guy who was like really overweight and he was in an inner tube <laughs> with like those like booms with the, like fuzzy phone on it to get the sound. He's floating around that pipeline. In a freaking inner tube, like big guy. And I'm just going, God, it, ignorance is bliss. He has no idea what danger he's in right now. <gasps> oh, that's classic. Um, I'd love to see a second one or bring it back. I think just, no, I think they made a second one and went straight to DVD and they didn't use any of the original characters. And I hate when they do that. <laughs> What else have you been doing during the quarantine? You said music. Um, what else have you stayed busy with? So for my cute little bipolar brain, it's like really overactive and super hates uncertainty. <laughs> uh, I have to have, um, I have to have things that really um, crack my mind and make me focused. I think that's why I've always gravitated towards wave surfing because it really forces you to be right in the creation from that is death so <laughs> i need i need stuff that um that really, really like makes me present so for me it's really like a, something physical like i've been doing a lot of like painting walls like painting furniture, doing home projects like it has to be something physical but also like very mentally um involved mm -hmm. and That's also great. like uh, trying to exercise a lot of cooking super chefing it up right now um, I'm quarantined with two roommates, so I've become the, uh, the in-house chef. <laughs> That's nice. Everyone takes their roles during this whole process. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, my, I'm the chef. My one roommate's really good at cleaning, and then my other, my other roommate is just, like, been giving me therapy sessions. <laughs> well, a lot of people would consider you fearless. Uh, let's think about you know, those moments when you're paddling out to a place like Jaws or, um, you know, any big wave for that matter. How do you stay calm in a really scary situation? Uh, well, here's the thing. I'm not fearless, everybody, uh, just to set that straight. Um, I feel fear absolutely every time I paddle out in big wave. I feel it every time. But when you are able to overcome that fear, and triumph and get a bomb wave. It is the most self it's the most self empowering feeling that you are will ever feel. So I think that th this I'm addicted to the surfing and the rush, but that I think the two is that the ability to push past that fear. You know, everything you want is on the other side of fear, and it's, it's that feeling when you get there is so amazing. Awesome. But I think it's really also, important. But also with the with the with the bipolar thing, you know, depending on whether I'm hyper or like in a bipolar, then I literally go from super confident, thing, KK is going to go out and freaking send it to literally like super insecure, 
for doubting my ability. I'll literally be out there like that. So that's a that's a hard part of, of doing the big wave surfing because you just never know when a swell is going to pop up, mm -hmm. and you never know where you're going to be on the mood spectrum because it's going to greatly affect how you perform. So that's something I have trouble with. Yeah, in a strange way, knowing that we can't just jump on a plane and go to a swell is, it, at least for me, it's providing me a little bit more stability to just know I'm going to wake up here tomorrow and I don't have to pack a suitcase and I know I'm going to be here the day after that. <laughs> so, right. like, the positive of this is I'm not running around and I think, you know, slowing down a little bit might be good for all of us. Yes, it is probably good for us. Um, I am getting super itchy because I... I feel like this happens every year. I, I do the WS Yahi challenge and because you're gonna because they you know, hold it when it's like super windy and it seems really gnarly and it's pretty much awesome. wipe out at jaws and not have your leg your leg around under to where all your medial collateral get ripped. So I feel like every year I have ligament injuries in my leash leg and then I spent the rest of the winter trying to get my my uh, get over my injuries and uh so now that like, I feel like I'm finally my ligament I'm so itching to go surf a big well and it's like not only is like winter wrapping up but now I'm quarantined <laughs> <laughs> well you definitely have a lot of so every, courage every and Every year, I go literally ahead. go through. Um, I go through like a, a, a. I go through a bipolar depression every right around March or April because it's like I'm mourning the fact that like when like the summer swells aren't hitting yet. Every year, like, right around tax time, I can never do my taxes on time because I'm literally in a depression about. <laughs> I always got to file an. I just mentally cannot deal with anything. For, for March and April. And yeah, again, I've heard this from so many big wave surfers over the years in interviews about that is a real thing when we adrenaline, adrenaline junkies go from the height of the action to a lull when there's not a big wave anywhere on the planet really to surf. And um, I think it's a hard. Lot I, think a lot of big wave, I think a lot of big wave surfers are probably bipolar. <laughs> I do like the constant. To answer your question, Tiffany, I surf much better when I'm manic, hundred percent. When I'm manic, I get really confident in my ability. In a bipolar depression, I have a lot of self doubt. What a, What are some tips that you could recommend to people that are dealing with a lot of sadness and anxiety right now? Things that you said music was one. What What else gets you out of that funk, or at least like can help relieve it a bit? I think it just, you know, we could really use this time to like focus on self care, you know, uh, ed like educate yourself on things. I'm talking about taking like, music courses to learn new things. Um, I know Paige Alms has gotten super into her gardening. Her garden is just like amazing, you know. Um, <laughs> exercise like get into yoga like things we always make excuses for like oh we don't have enough but you've got so much time right now so there really is no excuse to like read that book that's been sitting on your shelf or you know whatever it is tackle your garage like home projects don't just uh netflix and chill through the whole thing like <laughs> yeah use use this time. you can do that a couple days all of a sudden use this time like, to not a series <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, too much TV. I'm trying to. I'm trying to avoid TV and social media right now. For sure. Well, I think um, I'd love to invite everyone in the audience to check out your SoundCloud and get to D DJ KK's music tracks because it is awesome and super upbeat, and I really love everything you're doing. Uh, thank you for tuning in today and for leading the way for women surfing. I hope to see you very soon out of quarantine as soon as possible. Me too. <laughs> I can't, hug, I can't wait to hug people. It's really weird. The social, the social distancing thing is super strange. 
I think a lot, especially for the Hawaiian Islands, where there's so much aloha spirit, and you're used to like kissing people on the cheek and being like very physical, and that has just been so hard. Um, I really hope we can all bounce back from from this and bring even more aloha afterwards. Um, but yeah, to everyone watching, thank you for tuning in. And uh, well, I'll tell I you what. I'm going to be working on, like, some killer mixes for the uh, We Survived Coronavirus party that you know we're having. Can't wait for those. <gasps> Woo! <That's okay. laughs> I will tune in and join you from your living room, too, or wherever you're going to be. Um, if you want to go live someday, and happy to promote that. I think dancing, even if it's alone or with your roommates right now, can really help. I know even Garrett McNamara is doing, like, a laughter yoga where they just sit around and just start belly laughing. So all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> helpful. Um, I'm actually right. I'm going yeah. to work on a mix specifically for like working out to motivate people to like do their home workouts and, you know, they help. So yeah, I'm going to go live soon. I'm putting together you guys. Good stuff. All right. Well, thanks, KK. We Always oh, good we'll to see, see you. You too. Aloha. 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 Aloha.